G'day, Danger Mouse back again. Uh, today having a talk about lubricants and in particular engine oils. We've had a fair bit of uh, discussion over the time we've had the Husqvarna page for 449 511 platform regarding engine oils. So yeah, this is just a bit of information for you. Uh, I'm not a scientist or a petrochemist. Um, I'm just a motor mechanic. Um, been in the trade about 35 years and counting. Um, but yes, I do take the time to keep up to date with lubricants and most things mechanical and uh, you know have asked the question of a lot of our oil reps over the years uh, various different questions so I like to think I'm reasonably well informed uh, as with all people I don't know everything so yeah feel free to add comments or ask questions away uh, so yeah numbers on oil bottles what do they mean okay we've got a couple of bottles here um, this one here 15 is marked 15 W40 this one here that I run in my turbo diesel four-wheel drive ute is uh, 5W30 and uh, the one that I run in the 449 is uh, a little bit difficult to see there, very small writing, but 5W40. So what do they mean? Uh, the Society of Automotive Engineers uh, came together to make a standard and they uh, test the oils according to these standards. So they come up with a series of tests for each new oil as, it, uh, as they improve, the lubricants improve and um, automakers, vehicle makers uh, come up with greater demands. They might want to extend the oil drain or uh, get more efficiency fr from the engine, excuse me. Um, so yeah, each new uh, step in lubrication demands new tests so they increasingly move forward. But these numbers uh, remain f constant. Um, the numbers themselves you might have seen on a power product oil, uh, lawnmower oil, say, SAE 30 oil, just single number, uh, might be SAE 40, say. Uh, that oil, if they test it at the test temperature for a warm engine, which is 100 degrees Celsius, it will perform like a 40 weight oil at 100 degrees. If they test it at the cold rating at the other end of the scale at zero degrees, it will perform like a 40 weight oil at zero degrees. Uh, so what does that mean for us uh, and what does the double rating mean? Uh, I've drawn up a diagram here. It's not a scientific graph, but it's a diagram and hopefully you can see there. So down the bottom here we have our temperature, zero degrees to 100 degrees. They're the two test points. And up here we have oil viscosity, so how, how well the oil flows. So you can imagine a jar of honey from the fridge at zero degrees, it's nigh on impossible to stick a spoon in. But uh, get it out at room temperature, you can pour it away, put a spoon in it, tip it on the bench or your toast or whatever you're having. So same for oils, they're thicker, generally thicker when they're cold and thin out when they're hot. So if we had our oil that we were just talking about, an SAE 40 weight, at zero degrees it would be quite thick and difficult to move around the system with the oil pump, uh, passing through all the thin galleries, past all the bearing surfaces. As that oil heats up, you find it's much easier to flow and would be suitable for use in a 449 with its 40 rating at that temperature, but would be clearly too thick for cold startup. So how do you get around that? Well, you could run a five weight engine oil it would flow very well at zero degrees. But as that oil th heats up, it thins out. Single rating, you get down here at 100 degrees, you won't have enough oil pressure to keep the engine alive and you'll find you'll have metal to metal contact. So part of the, the solution was devised a number of years ago, a bunch of additives that they stabilizers and uh, flow additives and what have you are added to the engine oils and that's how we end up with these two ratings. At zero degrees, this 5W40 flows like a five weight, but is pretty stable right across the range up to 100 degrees where it performs like a 40 weight would. So it doesn't mean that the oil is necessarily thinner. Certainly at that temperature, it's exactly the same thickness as a 40 weight, and it will protect like a 40 weight. But what it does mean down here is when you fire that bike in a cold shed in the ice and the snow at zero degrees, that oil will get around inside the motor and do its job as soon as it possibly can. 
where up here if you're running a 15 weight or a 20 weight you've got a thicker oil and likewise down at this end if you're running a 50 weight or a 60 weight then it's still thick for the motor to pump around the system where it's designed for this 40 weight. Okay, so that's what the two readings mean. Do we need to be scared of various ratings? Well, it would depend a little bit on your climate. Um, here in Australia, I run the 5W40. Um, we never see, typically, around here, we very rarely see zero degrees. If I take it out to some of my riding areas and it's really early in the morning, there's some frost on the ground, but it doesn't snow. Um, my motor has been fine on that oil. Uh, I don't worry about it thinning out at high temperatures because it is rated for that uh, as a 40 weight oil at high temperature. Uh, having it thin or the low number being small really has no bearing on engine life at all. Um, it just means that that oil will get moving around the system earlier and do its job earlier and get on, uh, keep on running. Um, to that end, uh, my diesel four wheel drive is recommended to have this 5W30. Now, some people with a drag, race, drag racing background would say, I would never run a 30 weight engine oil in my vehicle. My engine was designed for that oil. Um, it's a Nissan, Nissan specify that oil for the car. Um, that 30 weight oil keeps metal to metal contact at bay and it makes 406 Newton meters of torque. So all of that torque has to be supported, if you like, buy the film of engine oil and that's what it was designed to run on so getting a particular number in your head and then trying to use that engine oil in, in everything every tractor and car and motorbike that you own um, is really a folly. Um, another thing that is important particularly for motorbikes is this rating on the back. Now typically most car oils will not have any mention of this JASO J J -A -S -O rating it's basically the Japanese version of the SAE. They're a standards organisation and they came up with this MA rating for wet clutches. You can see here this one is MA2. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, the Japanese came up with a standard. The bulk of their bikes have wet clutches. I can't think of any dry clutches myself. I'm sure there's some there and someone might correct me. But um, yeah, the bulk of the Japanese motorcycles have wet clutches, so they decided to come up with a standard for their oil so that their clutches would last and everyone could make the right material for the clutch and then supply the right oil for it. So they test for uh, uh, initial bite from the clutch, how smooth that is, so uh, smoothness of take up, um, the grip and the ability or the resistance to breaking of that clutch and uh, clutch feel. So uh, to get that MA rating, there's a certain set of numbers that they have to attain. You can see that oil that I just displayed there, the Castrol is a MA2. Uh, they're basically higher standards, so it's got a higher grip strength when the clutch is released before it'll break away. It has better feel as it engages um, and it protects well. It's a tricky balance, obviously, for an engine oil because you're trying to stop friction within the motor and the gearbox and all the mechanical working parts but you're trying to add friction to the clutch linings. So there's a complex set of additives that they put in oils uh, that not all regular car or four wheel drive engine oils are going to have. Um, some companies do take the time to register their uh, or to test their car engine oils. Uh, we have one in this country called Penrite. Um, their HBI5 oil is a 5W40 automotive oil for cars but it does have a, an MA, just a plain MA rating. So uh, they've run it through the test, it reached the minimum test for MA rating and, and is quite safe for wet clutch use. Um, so there's a third rating uh, MA1 uh, and what that is is oils as they progress they came up with this MA2 test. Um, they then have this second category where oils meet and exceed the MA test uh, and meet some of the MA2 test but not all criteria so they give them an MA1 rating so a half step if you like between MA and MA2. If you can find it an MA2 oil obviously is the best for your clutch. Um, my clutch is still all original I've never even looked at it um, and it's just short of 8,000 k's. A lot of that is slipping the clutch in single tracks, popping over logs and all that sort of stuff. 
I'm not a racer. Um, I'm an old guy on a TE449, but I give the clutch a fair workout. Um, it's my go-to, you know, traction aid is using my clutch. So it's seen a lot of action and it's still firing and it's all been on that oil. So yeah, I like it. Um, clearly there's other companies out there that make great oils and uh, yeah, choose the oil of your, your preferred company. Uh, I'll try to stick to that 5W40 and MA2 if you can get it, certainly MA. Um, one thing I haven't covered with the particular, it's peculiar to the Husqvarna and the BMW motor that we use, is the torque limiter. Uh, that is a metal to metal disc set pressed together under a certain tension and that is the fuse if you like between the engine and the gearbox in our particular motor. We don't have a um, cush drive in the hub or any rubber uh, damping on the clutch. The Any shock loading that comes from the rear wheel to the that's trying to go back through the gearbox to the engine is taken out by that torque limiter so I think you'd be very wise to use an oil with an MA rating specifically because we have that torque limiter in the engine. Um, putting another oil with a different friction modifying additive or what have you in it, um, you may run the risk of um, having that torque limiter fail. Um, not insurmountable but you know, do you really need to be inside your engine because you had a, a choice of oil. So yeah, hope that all helps. Uh, feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comments below. I'll try to get back to YouTube and have a look from time to time and uh, hit us up on the Facebook page 449 511 Owners Group. Thanks for your time. See you later.